thank you for inviting me to uh, present my own prejudices about celiac disease here. All, all speakers have their own prejudices, and I'll let you have mine. The objectives of my study are really to say, what is celiac disease? How do you know if you've got celiac disease? How is it treated? And then is there such a thing as gluten intolerance without celiac disease? Now, just a little bit of history. It's a, it's a disease which was recognized years ago by Samuel G., who called it uh, the celiac affliction. Uh, it was done in the 1800s. Uh, at that time, they didn't know it was due to gluten sensitivity, but they realized that if you f fed uh, the children fruit, potatoes, bananas, milk, and meat, but didn't give them cereal, they would get better. Uh, later on, it was shown that cereal consumption was the cause of the problem, and this was uh, 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 reinforced during World War II when the lack of cereal resulted in cure of celiac disease and reduction in the incidence of the disease. And then it was a very painstaking research that showed that something in wheat, barley, rye, and oats, which was uh, the gliadin, uh, is a particular protein peptide uh, that was responsible for celiac disease. Now, one you've got to realize that celiac disease is really a genetically transmitted disease, mainly of European uh, uh, populations. The only exception is that in India, there's, the Punjabis have a 2.9 times the prevalence of Europeans. It's very surprising, but there's a small pocket there. Uh, they claimed it's maybe due to the fact that Alexander's army invaded the north of India some years ago. Now, the patients carry a, a type of what's called uh, the uh, uh, genetic traits, which are called uh, HLA. And they are given different names. And you can see here there's a DQ2 and a DQ8. And it turns out that you have to have this genetic trait to really uh, become celiac. On the other hand, if you carry the trait, not everybody gets celiac disease. And you can see that it's, because it's quite a common disease. It's uh, present in, in about approximately 1% of the population. And uh, it's becoming recognized uh, more often. What is more important is the fact that there's a lot of people who carry this trait and, in fact, have some gluten intolerance, but you don't know about it, as I'll show you in a minute. Now, you can see also that there is some evidence that, uh, particularly from Finland, where this was done, that the incidence of celiac disease seems to be rising. Uh, the question, of course, is, is this due to better detection or is it due to actual increase? Uh, there's a belief that there is probably actual increase. Note that celiac disease is often associated with type 1 diabetes. Uh, people, families that have type 1 diabetes also carry the gene for celiac disease, and the two go hand in hand. Now, this is, may look as a very complex uh, diagram, but I'd like to uh, point out to you that it's pretty straightforward. When you eat gluten, it gets processed by your gut and gets converted into a peptide. And this peptide act activates the, um, your genetic system to produce antibodies. And this, in turn, damages the intestine. And so this is how it works. Now, the risk, as I mentioned here, in the general population is less than 0.1%. But if you have this particular trait, it tends to be much more frequent. And first-degree relatives have an even higher degree. Now, what I'd like to point out to you is that celiac disease, clinically, in terms, of, is a continuum. You can have potential disease in which person carries the genetic trait. You can have latent disease in which there is very little change in the mucus lining, but when a person takes a very large load of gluten, then you can get some changes. And then you have asymptomatic disease, and then you have classical disease. Now, I'd like to show you what is classical disease? Classical disease is described as the pot-bellied child who has foul-smelling diarrhea, abdominal distension, and weight loss. And this person has uh, a change in their um, intestinal structure. The normal intestine has these lovely finger-like projections which increase absorption. What happens in celiac disease is this particular thing gets damaged, and you get a flattened mucous membrane. Now, uh, the, on the other hand, there is the atypical disease, which presents in many different ways, iron deficiency, sometimes with anemia, sometimes without anemia. 
And some of these patients even may de describe constipation rather than diarrhea. And some patients present only with abdominal pain. So you can see that single symptoms can occur, which is not typical of celiac disease, and yet, in a sense, maybe the, the, the basis of the celiac disease. I remember a patient who was a Holocaust survivor and came to me and said, I looked at his blood and I said, why are you iron deficient? Very inf man about 86 years of age, he was iron deficient. He says, oh, well, I've been like this for years. Well, to cut a long story short, he actually had celiac disease. And it, nobody knew about it for 85 years. Uh, the asymptomatic disease occurs in, uh, uh, because it's detected because of family history unexplained fatigue, unexplained low hemoglobin, uh, unexplained abnormal liver enzymes. Some people have a, a problem with balancing or ataxia, and some people have thin bones. And these are symptoms which you wouldn't expect uh, from an intestinal disease, but can, can be the, uh, the way in which it presents itself in uh, people. The gold standard for uh, doing, um, uh, for detecting celiac disease is the biopsy. Uh, use it, using an endoscope, you can get into the duodenum and you can take a little pinch of tissue and you can find uh, disease, which is, uh, this is the normal finger-like processes. And uh, initially you just get some uh, uh, s s uh, inflammatory cells in the villi and then with damage, the villi become thinner, uh, shorter and shorter, and ultimately the intestine loses this absorptive surface. The other uh, way of detecting celiac disease is by antibodies. The one which is typically useful is called tissue transglutaminase antibodies. This is very sensitive. It is almost as good as biopsy, although there are a few patients who have some false positive results. Uh, if you have uh, one in 700 people do not carry the protein, which is uh, um, IgA, for which this is tested. And in these people, you can use a different kind of system, uh, which is called deaminated gliadin. How do you treat people with celiac disease? Well, gluten-free diet is the, is, the, is the key to treatment. It normalizes the serology within two to three months and then gradually over several months, uh, you get improvement in the, uh, the villus structure. The histology gets the uh, intestinal fingers start to grow back again. If you have continued diarrhea despite the gluten-free diet, there can be many other reasons. One of this is that you have a disease other than celiac disease. Not every cause of diarrhea is due to celiac disease. There, are, there is a refractory form of the disease uh, which can occur, and you should realize that, that uh, celiac disease, if continued untreated in adult life, can be a precursor of lymphatic tumors or lymphomas, and uh, this could be another cause of the problem. This is one of the reasons why detection and treatment is important. Now, you should realize that when you treat these people, it requires a very uh, rigid gluten-free diet, and this is really quite an onerous diet. And therefore, the diagnosis should be made uh, in a proper way before you put people in a gluten-free diet because you cannot just give them a touch of gluten. You have to give them a, a truly gluten-free diet. Now, I'll finally talk about the fact that now it's been recognized that even people who do not have celiac disease, who do not get a genetic trait, can be gluten intolerant. That means if they eat gluten, they get symptoms. And here is an example of a controlled clinical trial that was published in the American Journal of Gastroenterology. And you can see here the, that this is the uh, this is so-called visual analog scale of symptoms. Uh, when they were given gluten, they got significantly more symptoms than when they were given a placebo. So I like to close by saying that um, celiac disease is one of the poorly recognized conditions. It occurs in uh, a, a number of people who do not know that it occurs in. It, it could all present itself in many different ways, uh, which can masquerade in the form of uh, uh, anemia or bone disease and uh, of even of neurological disease. And that, there, that if you do have the disease, it should be properly diagnosed with, uh, with a biopsy or with uh, uh, antibody tests of a reliable type. 
and uh, nobody should be diagnosed as celiac without doing that. It is a mistake to put people on gluten-free diet just because you think you've got celiac disease. Uh, on the other hand, there are people who are gluten intolerant, and one should recognize that a gluten-free diet, but not a very rigid diet, can be useful in that particular group. Thank you.